this webcast. In today's webcast, we're going to cover an introduction to print circuit board design with SOLIDWORKS PCB. I'm your presenter, Mark Talbot. I've got uh, a host of, of design experience in the man manufacturer field related to electrical products, um, as, as well as engineering degrees and certifications. That includes uh, mechanical certifications as well. And all that means is that I'm here to, to best service you and, and your needs and respond to your questions. So getting right into things, what's the big deal? Why are we talking about SOLIDWORKS PCB? How is it any different than any other tool? Uh, well, before we get into that, let's take a look at some, some issues we see. And essentially, uh, industry, it's, it's moved to smart products. You know, what used to be just a, a mechanical product you know, five, 10 years ago, now they're including printed circuit boards. You think of pallets that know its location in a warehouse and know the weight of the object it's on. And from there all the way up to your Nest thermostat. And ultimately, um, the, the mainstream design methodology with PCB design, it's, it's kind of broken. It's two separate tools, two separate individuals. There's no connectivity or communication between the two. And that is essentially producing a lack of a complete design solution or even the value that can be added by having concept to manufacture under one roof. So when it comes to print circuit board design, it's, it's a little bit more than just a board design, right? Every board has to go somewhere. You never go up to you know, a product at, at you know, a store and see the print circuit board itself, right? It's, it's enclosed, and that encapsulation of that board, um, that is a, is a, it's an important part of the design, right? We have a lot of customers who that um, part of the design, there's no tool that is addressing that area. And ultimately, that takes a lot of collaboration, communication, and documentation to, to get that aspect of the design. So let's look at the agenda of what we're going to cover today, and then we'll dive uh, further into things. So essentially, we're going to start off with PCB market design challenges that, that we see in industry today, the importance of designing with a collaborative platform, what SOLIDWORKS PCB is and what it can do for you, and then a demonstration of that tool. And then we'll end off with Q&A. And for the questions and answers at the end, uh, feel free at any time. You should be able to, to pull up a Q&A chat window um, or the chat window itself. That'll work too. Um, you can send those questions in at any time, and then we'll go ahead and answer those at the end. So what design challenges are there in PCB design? Well, we've mentioned already that there's a disconnect between the electrical and mechanical environment. And that's really leading to a lack of uh, what I'm terming a modern design flow. Essentially what we see in industry is that design flow from, from circuit board to mechanical, it tends to be very serial. So perhaps you start in the mechanical environment, you finish a board design, you hand it over to the mechanical and say, oh, there's thermal issues? Well, I guess you're going to have to create a mechanical barrier or, or add a fan or something. Um, or vice versa. We've, we've got the mechanical enclosure. Sorry, you're just going to have to make the board fit on the PCB design side. Um, so very serial design flow. And ultimately, there's no common vault. So when it comes to design re releases or changes, sometimes the ball gets dropped on the communication front. Um, there's no one location that has all of the project data in a specific area. Um, and ultimately, there's also wasted time when it comes to non-role specific tasks. You know, think of things like maybe you need to create a, a quality check uh, drawing for uh, for your PCB. If you were to do this in a PCB design tool, it, it's it's obviously not optimized for that type of documentation. So we're going to start with collaboration, and the question is why. Well, we mentioned that series versus parallel workflow. With a parallel workflow, specifically in PCB design, uh, you can start to realize some some dramatic improvements in in the data that you can get up front. So think of you know, thing like think of board outline, uh, mounting hole locations, critical component locations. This is stuff that if you were able to collaborate bidirectionally natively, you can realize very quickly. So right from the start of your project, you can get to the point where you're routing components uh, very efficiently. You know, something that I've seen take several weeks and several interac interactions back and forth. Anytime that you have better communication, ultimately you're going to get faster time to market and potentially even a better product. Also with collaboration, with a collaborative platform, you have improved 
resource and response control. And all that means is if you've got a bottleneck on a sensitive project, you can put more heads together and those, those heads can work more efficiently in their design tools at the same time to produce an outcome. And that's something that can only happen and occur with collaboration. And as far as staying relevant in today's market, you know, today's market, people, manufacturers, they're moving to collaborate, collaborative design tools. They're moving to uh, tools that, that allow them to get to, to manufacture um, more efficiently. And if you want to keep up with those trends without just throwing time and money at it, um, then that investment in an efficient workflow is going to be necessary to stay relevant. So what is SOLIDWORKS PCB? Well, SOLIDWORKS PCB, is a, it's a standalone package. You don't need SOLIDWORKS to operate it. And within that package, that tool, it has schematic capture built in as well as layout. And that layout includes both 2D and 3D layout for that tool. It also comes with mechanical collaboration. And that includes bi-directional collaboration with SOLIDWORKS Mechanical. And then you can realize full fabrication outputs from the SOLIDWORKS PCB environment as well as those added outputs from the mechanical environment. Now, I mentioned what SOLIDWORKS PCB is. Well, we actually have two tools. There's two SOLIDWORKS PCB products. Uh, first is SOLIDWORKS PCB, which, which we mentioned. It's got the schematic capture, board layout, and collaboration built in. Second, we have SOLIDWORKS PCB connector. Now, if you notice, SOLIDWORKS PCB, it's actually powered by Altium. It has the Altium engine. So as a result of that relationship, we also sell the connector for Altium Designer. So what that means is Altium Designer has schematic capture, board layout, and now we've added the capability for them to also communicate bidirectionally with SOLIDWORKS Mechanical. And both of these tools collaborate with a free SOLIDWORKS PCB services tool that we offer, and that, store, that stores the instructions essentially to build the models in both environments to allow for that, that communication back and forth. So we mentioned you know, the, the disconnect here. Well, essentially, if we want to produce one product, currently today, most people are using two products or two software packages to produce that product. And so what that means is your divide in communication and in an efficient workflow, that divide is really file exportation. Exporting to step, IDF, IDX, DXF, so on. You know, as a mechanical user, you never really want to deal with this with with a step file. You don't want to deal with a non-native uh, file. Because any changes that need to be made, those changes can't be done natively. There has to be a secondary documentation that has to be worked on, and that has to get passed back over to uh, perhaps the PCB design side, and that information has to be reiterated in that environment. So already we've done, we've documented something twice just to get the change realized. Also, now that you can't do something natively, you're playing a bit of phone tag. So there's a loss in, a loss in translation. And this can even influence the, um, the, the final product um, as an outcome. So maybe your product isn't as, as efficient. It, it, it's because collaboration is such a pain, you settle on something that works instead of something that's optimal. So ultimately, we've got our PCB design. Um, that's great, and that's what we're talking about today. However, I want to pose a question. Why might this matter to those who are designing electronic products? And basically what I'm getting at is when, you, when you're designing, when you're in a space of PCB design, it's not all about PCB design, right? All these boards have an enclosure, have a mechanical environment that they, they have to operate and perform in. Put it a little differently when it comes to electromechanical collaboration, things like the board outline, mounting hole locations, collision information, collision with components or the casing, and critical part placement. These are all, this is all information that generally the mechanical designer is responsible for. The problem is he's responsible for these things, but he cannot influence any of them directly. He has to create secondary documentation again, and that has to be recreated on the PCB design side. So the question is, is there a better way in today's design environment when it comes to PCB design? And our answer to that is SOLIDWORKS PCB. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tool, a demonstration of SOLIDWORKS PCB, of maybe different workflows that you can realize as a result of having a collaborative tool. So we're actually going to start here in the mechanical environment. And this is the assembly that we want to work in. 
And ultimately, we want to see what it's going to take to get a board to fit and function in that enclosure. So you can actually start your project from the mechanical environment right off the bat. Now, this can be done from either environment, but for the sake of this, this demonstration, we're going to show it from the mechanical environment. So once we do that, the mechanical tool is going to give us an assembly, and that assembly is going to have one component at the start, and that's going to be the board. So we have that assembly. We can use normal mechanical tools, throw that sub-assembly now into the upper-level assembly, and then we can mate that and locate that in place and where it needs to go. And the great thing here is, since we're using all those SOLIDWORKS mechanical tools, we can very quickly and efficiently use those tools to document a board outline. The high-level view here is I can blow away that de default board shape. I can grab any mechanical information from my assembly, in this case a sketch that I've already predefined, and I can generate that to create my new board shape. So if I'm using offset entities, convert entities, grabbing curvatures on enclosures, these are all tools that I can use in the SOLIDWORKS mechanical environment, and we're giving these tools directly to the mechanical engineer. At this point, I can open my board assembly. I can go ahead and edit the board shape. I can even start adding mounting hole locations. That can be done with hole, the hole wizard tool or uh, the cutout tool as well. So that's what I'll do here. I'll go ahead and add some mounting hole locations. And these can be located in the, in the upper level assembly if needed. And then I'm going to go in and add in some extruded cut features. So in a PCB design tool, some extruded cut geometry, is, it's harder to document. Well, now that we have a, a mechanical 3D CAD tool, that geometry can be quickly realized in this tool. And those cuts can be made. And now I could send this over to, to SOLIDWORKS PCB, to the PCB design environment. But I actually want to go ahead and insert some clearance information. So whether I create a dummy part, right? I have a, a board assembly, so I can throw components into that assembly. Uh, so this is just kind of a, a part that's going to represent um, some clearance information, kind of a keep out, a mechanical keep out, uh, so to speak, for my design. So I can make that where it needs to go, and ultimately that'll act as a component barrier on the PCB design side. And I can see that collision information in both environments as needed. Well, this is all well and good. I can create sort of a, a rim around my parts, keep out areas, um, maybe a height barrier. But ultimately, I want to communicate the enclosure information and use that as our keep out, as our barrier information. Well, I can do that as well. I can pull my enclosure, pull it into my board assembly, and have that located and made it in free space. And then ultimately, at this point, I'm ready to push this design to the PCB environment so that the PCB layout can be performed with this information up front. So here I'm going to go ahead and say all the updates that I've made in this project, and then I can even ask for critical components to be placed, those connectors, push buttons, LCD screens, and so on. Now I'll go ahead and suppress any information I don't want to see in the upper level assembly, and that collaboration is still going to perform um, as desired even after that suppression in the mechanical environment. So now we're in SOLIDWORKS PCB. Again, it's a standalone design tool. We can do complete design from any workflow that you do today uh, from this tool. And I can open that project that was, create, that was created in the mechanical environment. And then I can go ahead and add any schematic information that I want. In this case, I've got pre-existing schematics, but you can start from scratch at this point as well. I'm going to do a comp compilation of my project. And what that reveals is that I actually have hierarchical design in SOLIDWORKS PCB. So that's available as well. And all that means is I can have a symbol that represents a completed schematic with ports, and those ports will match uh, that schematic. Just some background on SOLIDWORKS PCB. Um, as I go to this symbol here, I can actually link this component to a supplier, and that supplier shows real-time data. So if, as I search for a supplier, I'll select one here kind of at random, you know, whether it's DigiKey, Fresnel, there's a host of suppliers that are available. I can grab all this parametric information, PDFs, and so on, and add it to that part. And now you can see I've got all that information that has just imported from my supplier, and that is going to be available for reporting. And again, it's real time, it's live. If I want to know pricing, if it's still available, all that information is going to be available. As far as how our libraries work, I can 
go ahead and browse through our libraries. You can see the symbol. You can see the footprint view available. If I drag this symbol in place, I can see this, this symbol. It has a footprint assigned. I can also assign a simulation to that symbol and all my parametric information. So you can build up your library to any extent necessary and stay that time downstream if you have a lot of data reuse of the same components. So really helping you populate your designs very quickly and efficiently. At this point, I can also commit our project. So what this means is I can create a state and version control that I can revert back to. So add some notes, and maybe I go down one design path and realize that's not going to work. I can revert back to another part, portion of the design and then continue on as that becomes sort of my master aspect of that design. So here we're going to add our PCB. Now I just added a, a generic printed circuit board. And I see I get a message that changes have been made from the mechanical environment. So I can preview those uh, by double clicking and see what the change is going to, what change is going to occur. And then I can accept all that information. So right from there, all that mechanical work that was done has been populated into my PCB tool. And now I can go in, I can uh, locate all of my critical components and populate those on my board. So in this case, I have 100 plus components to be added. Well, I only want to look at my critical components at this point. So I'll deselect all, grab my connectors uh, just as a proof of concept of this, and throw in my connectors to this design. So within SolidWorks PCB, I can locate those, those connectors, and I'm just going to kind of rough them in place. I can do this as a, in a 3D view or a 2D view. And maybe I've got a few days where I kind of know where they go, and then the rest I can just kind of drag in. Um, but the idea here is I can push this to the mechanical environment, and from that environment they can be fine-tuned, their position can actually be located um, so that uh, we can get a final placement for those critical components. But first I see, hey, I've got some clearance issues from the mechanical environment. I can correct those uh, right here within the tool. And now I'm ready to go ahead and send that over to be defined uh, more precisely from the mechanical space. So I'll send a message, and this message is ongoing for the life of the project, so we can go back and follow that documentation process that has gone back and forth. And now I'm within SolidWorks, the mechanical tool. Same thing, I see, I see those changes. I can accept them on an individual basis if needed. And now I'm up to speed with all the changes that have been done in SolidWorks PCB. Since I'm in SolidWorks Mechanical, I can take my subassembly, throw it in the upper level, and this allows me to edit that subassembly, and now I can locate those components exactly where they need to go uh, in 3D space. Now you'll notice I've got silk screen and copper information that also gets communicated through. And this is a separate process that, that uh, gets updated every time I, I make a round trip and pull in from the PCB environment. So right now I'm just focusing on, in on location, and that copper information will be re-updated the next uh, trip around. Now here I notice, hey, my components are actually on the wrong side of the board, but I've got them located where they need to go. Well, within the mechanical tool, I can flip that board to the right, to the proper side that I need. And then ultimately for these three connectors, I can also lock those connectors in play. And the motivation there is uh, I want to communicate exactly what is considered um, critical and what isn't. So in this case, I've only had to define these three components. So I'm going to say those three are critical. And that can be communicated by fixing them in place, which will also lock them in the PCB environment. So at this point, I'm ready to, again, um, post this back to the PCB environment. And we can ask for the remaining components to be placed and a last sanity check of our location of components and clearance to be uh, checked in either environment or really in both environments. So instead of going through and locating all those components at this point, um, we can instead go ahead and focus in on our, our fabrication outputs. So here we see SolidWorks PCB environment. We've got our critical components located. I'd have to go to the properties in order to move those critical components to unlock it first. And that's just a, a safe check for me uh, to make sure that I don't accidentally move something that was marked as critical. I can make a, another revision for version control. 
And ultimately that, again, is, is a revertible state that I can go back to. But let's go ahead and take a look at our generated outputs. So we've got a bill of material tool. It's actually a reporting tool. It does more than just bill of materials. Uh, for example, I could report on PCB component locations. I could very quickly and efficiently uh, add whatever parametric information is in my project right to this report. So you know, supplier part number, is it still available, currency, uh, pricing, and so on that can be added to that report. I can go ahead and configure some common outputs. In this case, I'll quickly configure uh, Gerber and some drill file information. And ultimately, I can just check what I want to generate and go ahead and process those outputs all at once. And once those are, are run, those outputs will be added to my project. So right from the project, I could open them. For example, we're going to open this Excel document that was created for the bill materials. So at this stage of the game, I'm going to go ahead and add a finished board and update that in the assembly just so you can see where this, is, this can go. So this board, it's multi-layers. It's got all the trace information documented. There's actually an auto router for tracing as well if that's a tool that you'd like to use. But I can push this finished board uh, to the mechanical environment. Again, have that update in mechanical. And then I can realize this design in its upper level assembly, which will allow me to get accurate, uh, perhaps marketing information, clearance information. I can even use, utilize simulation information in the mechanical tool. Uh, the idea here is when it comes to work instructions or anything else, if there's any SolidWorks mechanical tools that I can, that I can realize um, at this stage of the game, I've got documentation for um, both my electrical and mechanical aspects. So I can realize both environments and the benefits that are, are able to be perceived from the mechanical. So we talked about our design challenges. Well, the design solution that we had to these problems when it comes to electrical mechanical disconnect, we've got seamless bidirectional co collaboration in a managed environment. So that allows us to have a modern design flow, which is a parallel workflow that can be realized only from a unified platform. Uh, something we didn't cover yet, but can, can be handled is when it comes to common vault information, hindering design releases, you can bring your whole project under one design workflow. And that can be done with SolidWorks PDM because you're, you're investing in the SolidWorks platform. We talked about leveraging SolidWorks information using all the tools for all it's worth. Um, for example, you know, when it comes to a quality check drawing for the dimensional drawing for your board. While you've got all that high fidelity information in the SOLIDWORKS mechanical tool, you might as well use those SOLIDWORKS specific uh, tasks that it's optimized for. And so the idea here is an improved workflow, what does it do for you? Well, it's going to reduce your errors in communication. So that thereby is going to reduce your prototype spins. So if you're spending five, 10 grand on a prototype, if you just reduce you know, one prototype a year, you know, that's, that's going to be a great return on investment over the price of the tool. This accuracy improvement is going to allow you to uh, create a, a final product that is really optimal. No longer do you have to consider, hey, collaboration is so tough. We've got a design that's working. Let's just roll with it. And ultimately, you're going to save that time and effort, right? For when it comes to, to routing and in, in, in the PCB environment, you really don't want to route any more than you need to. So if you can justify and validate that all your components are truly uh, free and clear and, and located as best as they can be up front, you want to get as close to those com where those components need to be, as few revisions as necessary um, before you hit routing. And that's what we can do uh, with SOLIDWORKS PCB in that collaborative, collaborative environment. So in summary, we've talked about the importance of designing with a collaborative platform. We've gone into the PCB design challenges in the market and how we can fulfill those challenges. We've gone through the products that we offer as a quick overview. It's a standalone tool that can communicate with the mechanical environment. And you've seen a demonstration of that mechanical workflow um, where that project can actually be started in either environment. So really, when it comes to SOLIDWORKS PCB, I've only, I've only scratched the surface. So I've included my contact information here 
Uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or if you want to inquire about anything specifically. Also, you can reach out to your sales rep. We'd be happy to to kind of validate if this is a, a tool that that'll be useful for you guys. Also, we have dedicated support for these tools. So when it comes to um, any assistance you may need, we'd be happy to help with that as well. And ultimately, we, all, we also offer training for these products as needed. So this finishes and concludes the presentation portion of our webcast, and I want to thank you for your attendance. For those of you who are interested in training, if you're interested um, in either online or classroom training, we want to give something to you as a part of attending this, this webcast. And essentially for the next 30 days, if you use the code get trained, you can receive 20% off your purchase until July 25th. Um, and this is really for any class at any level. Uh, so, so feel free as a thank you to you, um, have access to, to that 20% off for training. And with that, uh, just a reminder, you can throw any of your questions into the Q&A section or the chat window and I'd be happy to address those. So it looks like we have a few questions that's come in so far. Uh, one is, can this collaboration be done between users at different locations, not on the same intranet? So essentially this collaboration, um, as long as you can access a, unif a single server, then you're able to collaborate this information. Now, if, if for some reason that's impossible, uh, what you can also do is you can send the files over. They can be opened in a, a basically a environment where you can collaborate and, and defined as a project there, and then you can collaborate from there and then send those files back. Um, but the, the bottom line is if you want bidirectional um, real-time communication, you need to be able to access a, a single server location. The next question we have here is, it says that you mentioned Altium in the connector product. Does this collaboration work with Altium? Yes, yeah, so the, the connector product, um, essentially, that is for specifically for Altium Designer. And that actually works as an extension uh, within Altium. So within Altium, if you went to extensions and updates, you can um, browse for the SOLIDWORKS PCB connector. And once installed, it'll ask you for that serial number. It looks like we had another question related to that as well. Um, and essentially someone was asking, hey, I, can, I see that I, I can enable the add-in inside of SOLIDWORKS. Is there any functionality with this without SOLIDWORKS PCB or the connector? Um, so basically, the, the, the add-in is available in all of your mechanical tools, 2017, I believe, and later. You can actually collaborate previously. We just have to install an item for you. However, you won't get any functionality. There's nothing to collaborate with between Altium or SOLIDWORKS PCB unless you have that licensing. So SOLIDWORKS PCB, it comes completely with it. With Altium, you do have to purchase that license uh, from, from us in order to realize that collaborative benefit between the two environments. So any other questions, feel free to, to throw them in here. Got another question that just came in. How accurate is the components folder as in regards to the supplier information. So the supplier information, it's coming right off the supplier uh, web pages, essentially. So you can imagine DigiKey, you know, they have a host of data that they, um, that they apply, and that's, it's actually directly linked to that. So the, if, you know, when you order a part, if that part information is accurate from that supplier page, then it's gonna be accurate as a parameter inside of SOLARX PCB. Now you can clean up that data if needed, um, but it's it's really it's, it is that direct link as you go through. Another question came in: Are all the components in the PCB considered individual parts in the mechanical part tree? Um, there's actually a secondary question: Are there issues with the processor and visual memory when you're looking at a PCB with thousands of SMD parts? So let's handle the first one here. Essentially, in the mechanical environment, so you can have the same footprint that represents several electrical parts. So in PCB, you can organize that same footprint and assign it to all those different electrical parts. In mechanical, you're going to get those identical footprints. So in the mechanical, it's not a, 
you know, if you've got a 5 ohm resistor, it's not going to give you parametric information in mechanical that that part is a 5 ohm resistor. It's going to say this is the, the 3D body, um, and it's the same as all these other 3D bodies that have the same footprint. So it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one correlation there, um, but it's going to give you all the graphical and spatial information that is linked to that schematic part uh, with that parametric information where it's a specific part. So the schematic, in other words, holds the specific part information. When it comes to layout, it's just a footprint and just a component at that location, at that point. And so as far as visual memory, looking at PCB, well, SOLIDWORKS, um, the nice thing about this collaboration is in the SOLIDWORKS environment, you're not getting non-native information. It's actually creating SOLIDWORKS parts, which are handled very efficiently in SOLIDWORKS when it comes to visual memory, when it comes to storage size. And SOLIDWORKS has great tools for, um, for rendering those, uh, well, I shouldn't say rendering, for, for displaying those large assemblies, essentially. There's large assembly mode, for example, that's built into the tool. You can control the, um, the kind of sharpness of, of your uh, view as well to help with that processing time. Uh, so SOLIDWORKS has put a lot of effort into uh, what can we give the user to really help with those 1,000, 2,000 part assemblies um, if needed. Now out of the box, it's not going to be automated for you. you. You've got to actually go through those settings and choose kind of uh, what you want to give up or what you want to keep as far as those larger assemblies. So there shouldn't be any processor issues as long as you, you set your settings accordingly. Any other questions? Oh, it looks like I had another question just come in. How does this work with, with SOLIDWORKS PDM? Uh, so SOLIDWORKS PCB does have a, uh, a connector add-in to SOLIDWORKS PDM. So we mentioned briefly that you can bring in uh, multiple, both environments into one workflow. Uh, so check in, check out. You can actually start your project from PDM. And by the way, PDM can actually manage Altium files as well. So you can even start a project from PDM for Altium. Uh, you're just not going to get uh, data card information that feeds back and forth between the tools. Uh, that's something that you can only get with SOLIDWORKS PCB as, as kind of a um, separator of that tool compared to Altium and the connector. So it does play very nicely with uh, PDM workflows and managing all that data for that project in one place. All right, that looks like all the questions we have. Again, I want to thank you for your attendance. Uh, feel free to, to follow us on social media. And uh, have a great day. Um, and again, you can reach out to us or your sales rep if you have any further questions.